Almost everything in this build is extreme. It's unfolding at dizzying altitudes in thin air with huge temperature swings and 100 plus mile per hour winds. When something goes wrong up here, it goes wrong fast. What you're seeing is part of a much bigger story. Big Sky's massive transformation of how people move around one of the busiest ski areas in the country. The resort is ripping out aging 20th century lift systems and replacing them with a fully modern high capacity network. To do it, they're relying on some of the most demanding high consequence construction methods in the industry. On paper, Big Sky is already in the top tier of North American resorts. It offers around 5,800 acres of skiable terrain, served by nearly 40 lifts, with 4,350 feet of vertical drop from the summit of Lone Peak down to the main base. When Big Sky opened in late 1973, the entire lift system was a small four-person gondola and two chairs. One of those early chairs, Explorer, served novice terrain just above the base, and another rose into the bowl beneath the summit, but nothing reached the top of Lone Peak. That changed in 1995 when the resort installed the original Lone Peak Tram, a 15-passenger jigback tram that finally put easily accessible skiing on the over 11,000-foot summit. By the mid-2010s, all that infrastructure was showing its age, and the industry around it had changed. Large western resorts were adding high-speed lifts with bubbles, terrain expansions, and summer activities. Big Sky's terrain was world-class, but some of the core lifts were essentially 1970s technology. That's when the resort's owners announced Big Sky 2025 a 10-year, roughly $150 million on-mountain investment program. The goal was to build the most high-speed, high-tech lift network in North America, with 12 new or upgraded lifts, and backed by an additional one-plus billion dollars in broader resort area investment from development partners. So how are they actually making it happen? The first major step was Ram Charger 8, North America's first eight-seat chairlift in Big Sky's proof of concept for the whole D-Line strategy. When I talk about D-Line, that's Doppelmayr's newest generation of lift technology. Doppelmayr is the world's leading ski lift manufacturer, the Austrian company behind most of the modern chairlifts and gondolas you've probably ridden. D-Line is their modern platform, quieter, smoother, better performance. Ram Charger 8 runs at around five meters per second, with a capacity north of 3,600 people per hour using heated seats, bubbles, and a gearless direct drive motor that spins slowly but moves a lot of cable. Its tapered steel towers were delivered in sections sized for medium lift helicopters, then stood up in a single push of roughly 70 helicopter passes to install 13 towers in under 12 hours, with some bases sitting on more than 30 cubic yards of concrete. Then there was Swift Current 6, a quieter, more wind-tolerant lift that's the fastest six-seat lift in North America. Swapping an older quad for this kind of hardware on an existing corridor meant a dense piece of construction. Over just a few days, nearly 200 helicopter flights were used to pull out the old towers and set the new ones. The new Lone Peak tram adds a different layer of engineering on top of all of that. Instead of 15 passenger cabins, the replacement system uses 75 passenger cabins that climb roughly 2,100 vertical feet from the bowl to the summit in about four minutes. This is supported by a single tower on the face of Lone Peak and the two terminal buildings at roughly 9 and 11,000 feet. To make that possible, engineers had to build a dedicated high voltage line that climbs in the order of 2,200 feet horizontally with about 30 1,300 feet of elevation gain, routed over rock faces and avalanche terrain. Large sections of that cable run and its support hardware were installed by helicopter because there's no practical road route to the upper station. All of the heavy gear, from transformers to structural steel, had to be broken down into aircraft-sized pieces and flown to the site. On the north side of the mountain, the same philosophy shows up in Madison 8, which replaced the six-shooter lift with an eight-place D-line chair that nearly doubled uphill capacity and cut ride time by roughly 30%. It also became the longest eight pack in the world, stretching over a mile and a half from the Madison base up toward the Moonlight Ridge. Every one of its 25 towers were installed by Chinook, where pilots had to line up these multi-ton towers with precision down to the inch. By 2025, Big Sky had added roughly a dozen new lifts in less than a decade and rebuilt much of its mid-mountain infrastructure. But two big questions were still unsolved. How do you move people from the main base to the bowl and tram in a single fully protected line? And how do you make the summit itself usable for non-skiers and shoulder season visitors. 
The Explorer Gondola is a new two-stage D-line lift that will run from the Mountain Village base all the way to the Bowl, where it connects directly into the lower terminal of the Lone Peak Tram. It uses 10-person cabins and is designed to run at a bit over 13 miles per hour, about 15% faster than today's lift out of the village. This makes it the primary route for moving people efficiently into Big Sky's high alpine terrain. Construction has rolled out in phases. Foundation and mid-station work began in 2023, the upper terminal was framed and enclosed, and the lower terminal structure finished in 2025. The lower terminal is built into a tight footprint in the heart of Mountain Village, surrounded by hotels, shops, and dense underground utilities. Because it houses a modern high-speed drive, the entire station sits on a heavily reinforced concrete foundation. Cabins detach for loading, travel along a slow-moving conveyor, then accelerate back to full speed as they reattach to the road. The hydraulic tensioning system constantly adjusts for temperature swings, wind, and load changes, essential on a mountain where storms can shift rope behavior in minutes. The midstation sits in a rebuilt learning zone. Mechanically, it can operate in two modes, through running, where the cabins glide through without stopping, or stop and go, where selected cabins detach for beginner loading while others bypass. This keeps ski skull flow separate without reducing capacity to the upper mountain. From the midstation, the line climbs into the bowl to meet the tram. This stretch crosses deep, wind-exposed slopes, so its towers are taller and more heavily engineered than those lower down. Each sits on a buried, reinforced concrete block, often pinned into bedrock. These are designed to absorb vertical loads from full cabins at speed, lateral loads from high winds, and torsion from the lift line's curvature. Because many tower sites sit on terrain unreachable by standard construction equipment, they used, you guessed it, more helicopter placement to fly in tower tubes and cross arms. By late summer 2025, the upper terminal steel structure was enclosed and rope installation was underway, the last major milestone before cabins go on the line. Once open, riders will travel from Mountain Village to the mid-station in about four minutes and to the Bull in roughly nine. Kirkcliffe sits at 11,166 feet on the summit of Lone Peak, directly connected to the upper Lone Peak tram station. It replaces what used to be an exposed, windy unloading spot with a fully enclosed summit room offering 360 degree views across Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Its steel frame is anchored directly into summit bedrock. To create usable floor area without expanding the summit pad, engineers use cantilevered beams and composite steel and concrete floor decks that project out over steep terrain while balancing snow loads wind loads, and live loads from visitors. The exterior is built from laminated multi-layer glass panels weighing around 2,000 pounds each, engineered to resist 100 mile per hour winds and large temperature swings. Inside, the building rises two stories and includes a glass floored section extending several feet beyond the rock, allowing guests to look straight down the fall line below the summit. Constructing a building like this at the peak requires an even more aviation-driven approach. Major structural elements, crane sections, generators, and crates of glass were flown to the summit. With no road access and almost no staging area whatsoever on the summit, every component had to be delivered in aircraft-sized pieces and assembled in place. I love covering projects like this because they have to be perfectly designed and perfectly executed, and they depend on a group of construction workers with a level of guts most people will never match. This is the bright side of US construction, because even when we're surrounded with stories of cost overruns, slip schedules, and bureaucracy, there are still people out there doing insanely impressive work like this. I'm Josh, this is Bill Core. Thanks for watching.